smartphones definitely cause cancer. Maybe, maybe not. If you're watching on your phone, it's giving you mad cancer. Oh, it might be, or it might not. Two new studies have found a correlation between cell phone radiation and cancer in lab rats. Researchers from the U.S. National Toxicology Program tested 3,000 rats and mice of both sexes for two years, while European scientists at the Ramazzini Institute in Italy studied 2,500 rats from fetal stage to death. Smartphones emit non-ionizing radiation measured in radio frequency energy. Cell phones and wireless devices emit RF radiation continually, with dose intensity varying with distance from the body. The studies found that prolonged exposure to even low levels of RF radiation cause male rats to develop rare heart tumors called schwannoma, which affects a neuron called a Schwann cell. In the Ramazzini study, researchers also found a weaker link between RF exposure and glial cell cancer in the brain of female rats. So is your phone giving you cancer? Probably not as much as your diet. Keep watching this on your phone. The right way to charge your phone. If your phone battery is draining too fast and barely holding up, that might be your fault. You've probably been charging it wrong this whole time. Modern smartphones use lithium ion batteries that charge fast, but also get used up quickly because of the sheer amount of mobile activity they power. People tend to drain their phone batteries before plugging them in overnight. Fortunately, most are equipped with chips that protect against overcharging. Still, it's unwise to leave a device plugged once its battery is full, since trickle charges can heat up the phone, stressing and wearing down the battery. Experts recommend charging the phone before it empties completely and not bringing it to a full charge. Plugging it in occasionally throughout the day ensures the battery retains its capacity longer. Batteries also despise both extreme heat and extreme cold, so make sure it's not exposed to either. Of course, they will conk out eventually, but it's always nice to prolong that lifespan and save a buck or two. Google is watching. Google has been collecting location data on Android phones, even when the location services are disabled. Excuse me? Since January, all Android devices, even with location services disabled, have been sending cell tower addresses to Google. Devices with cellular data or Wi-Fi connection appeared to send data each time they were in range of a new cell tower. Android devices without a SIM card but connected to a Wi-Fi network would still send tower addresses to Google. With user location data, cell towers could be used to triangulate location to around a quarter of a mile radius, and even closer in urban areas where cell towers are closer together. According to a Google spokesperson, the data was not used or stored, and that the company was taking steps to stop the practice by the end of November. Whoops. Military analysts discovered data released by fitness tracking company Strava revealed sensitive information about U.S. bases and military personnel around the world. Global heat map published by Strava uses satellite information to plot the location and movements of its users by lighting up areas of activity. In locations like Afghanistan, Djibouti, and Syria, Strava users are almost all foreign military personnel, meaning their bases stand out brightly, which could be dangerous for operational security. Strava apps and devices can have their location services turned off. The company issued a statement urging users to make sure they understand the privacy settings. The locations of many of the sites are public knowledge. But still, someone's going to take the blame for this. Here's another reason to just ride your bike. Apple reportedly gave Uber's iPhone app access to a secret back door that potentially allows the company to record a user's screen and access other personal information without his or her knowledge. A majority of iPhone apps use software to enable features like the camera or Apple Pay, known as entitlements. However, Apple keeps certain entitlements for itself to allow optimal integration with the iPhone. Uber was found to be the only app other than Apple's own apps granted access to the entitlement. Uber says the entitlement isn't being used, and it is working with Apple to remove the API completely from the app. Security researcher Will Strafich, who discovered the situation, said this, Granting such a sensitive entitlement to a third party is unprecedented as far as I can tell. No other app developers have been able to convince Apple to grant them entitlements they've needed to let their apps utilize certain privileged system functionality. Anyone need a lift instead?